here again from Bangkok, Thailand, and it's great to be talking to you all and playing music for you all. Uh, today on the mandolin here, I'm, I'm going to play with two great friends of mine, Athena Turgis uh, and Billy McComiskey, uh, a tune from the harp tradition in Ireland, a tune called Loftus Jones. Now the harp, as many of you probably know, is the national symbol of Ireland, the official symbol, and it's found on the, the back of our currency. But going back to the Celtic era, and to one extent or another, we define ourselves as Celts in Ireland, along with our cousins in uh, Scotland and Wales and Brittany and Asturias and Galicia. Uh, and we define ourselves really through, through a sense of peoplehood, but also through culture. And in Ireland, uh, very heavily through musical culture, uh, the harp was the dominant instrument in, in Celtic society and culture uh, as the Celts moved across Europe and ended up on the scenic perimeter of the northwest of Europe. And it was an honoured uh, profession to be a harper, learned formally, it was our, I suppose, our classical music for the longest time. Uh, and then the saddest period in the history of the harp in Irish culture came in the 17th century with the overthrow of the Gaelic order. And they, the chieftains, the Gaelic chieftains were the patrons uh, of the harp players and the harp players diminished rapidly in number. And by the time it came to the 1790s when the Belfast Harp Festival was organized by patriotic gentlemen who were members of the United Irishmen. It was organized uh, really uh, as a, a, a tribute to a dying musical tradition. Uh, and fortunately, a lot of the tunes were written down by a man called Edward Bunting, a church organist uh, in, in Belfast at the time. And had it not been for his efforts, maybe the tradition would have essentially died out. Um, a lot of great music was played at that Belfast Harp Festival, and a lot of it was composed by the most famous harp composer of all, Turlick O'Carlin. And Turlick O'Carlin uh, lived at a very tempestuous time, of course, uh, but composed a lot of music uh, for various patrons he had in his lifetime. And he had a, 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 a habit of naming his tunes Planksty and then the name of the patron, uh, Planksty Loftus Jones. Uh, Loftus Jones was the son of a wealthy couple who lived in Arden, Glass County, Sligo. And actually, this tune named after him was one of the last tunes O'Carlin wrote before his death in 1738. He must have been some character to uh, have uh, been the inspiration for this beautiful tune. I really, I really love it. And uh, myself and, and Athena Turgis, uh, actually, and some other musicians had the great honor two years ago of playing this tune uh, right beside uh, Carolyn's grave in County Roscommon. Uh, and the great man is buried there. Well, at least most of him is buried there. Uh, his head is missing and some dastardly scoundrel ran off with his head. It was a fairly common thing in those, in those times for the heads of famous people to be stolen and then sold uh, uh, on, on, on the marketplace to equally unscrupulous people uh, as the head robber who took O'Carlin's head. But anyway, um, myself, Athena and, and, and Billy are going to try to keep our heads as we play Loftus Jones. And it's a beautiful tune for, for many reasons to many people. I'm going to hand over to Athena Turgis in Italy to say a few words to you and tell you why she likes Loftus Jones. Thank you, Mick. I am absolutely delighted to be here with you all in the warm virtual embrace of the New York Irish Art Center. Being a part of this community is more important to me than ever, and I'm so very grateful to them for continuing to inspire and support us all during these difficult times. Like many Americans, my ancestors came from all over the place. Greece, Turkey, Norway, Spain, Ireland. And I grew up hearing mainly classical music, taking Suzuki violin lessons when I was young. I was nine when I first came across Irish music. And not long after, I heard this piece we're going to play, Loftus Jones. And my ears perked up because I was learning a concerto via Vivaldi at the time, and I could hear echoes of it in this piece. It makes sense because Turlico Carlin and Antonio Vivaldi lived in the same time and good music does get around. 
Joining Mick and I on the accordion is the King of Brooklyn, All-Ireland Accordion Champion, Billy McComiskey. Now living in Baltimore, he was awarded the National Heritage Award in 2016 and receives the admiration and respect of all of us lucky enough to know him. <laughs>